Hello and welcome to Rock House Haven Arrest. This is a new camera. I'm just getting used to it. It doesn't have any uh, place to see what I'm recording. So, but it's a high quality uh, GoPro. It's called. There's a little plug for GoPro. Go to GoPro.com. But we have with us here Paul Volk at Rock House Haven of Rest here in California, and we've got um, three people in the audience here that uh, are very special people. And so Paul is going to share us a story about a young man who came to see him, and uh, what's his name? David. David. Go ahead. I have a friend in Alaska whose brother, David, was in Vietnam. And David loved Vietnam because he was a very angry, violent man, so he loved the killing, he loved the bloodshed. And finally the government said, uh, you're starting to go overboard, and so you need to go back into society. So he was angry, he wanted to stay and kill some more people. But uh, he called up his brother, my friend, and he said, uh, say, I need to come back to the U.S. Can I stay with you for a while until I get on my feet? And he said, sure, come and stay as long as you need to. So as soon as he hung up with his brother, the brother in Anchorage called me up, and he says, hey, my, my brother Dave's coming in from Vietnam. I'd really like him to have a Christian friend. Would you be willing to meet him? And I said, sure, why not? And he goes, well, I need to tell you a little bit about David. He's, he's very violent, and he's very angry, has a very short fuse. And I said, really? That didn't sound very good. But you know, Matthew 25, verse 40 says, when you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. So I said, okay, well, when David gets in, give me a call. So a few weeks went by, and David arrived, and they invited me over to dinner to meet him. Now, I'll have to admit, I stayed a good arm's distance away from David. I didn't want to get too close, because I figured if I said something that would set him off, I was going to go running out the door without opening it. But the evening went pretty good. And so I got ready to leave. David says, well, hey, maybe we can get together again sometime. And I said, uh, yeah, just give me a call. Well, he calls me the very next day. And he says, you know, I've been in Nam so long, I don't know what kind of clothes to wear. You look pretty sharp. How about I come over right now and let's go look for some clothes? And I said, well, David, I'm busy right now. And he goes, all right, I'll be there in an hour. So <laughs> David and I started spending time together. Of course, I invited him to church. And he goes, no, 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 church is not for me. And you can say a prayer for me when you get there, but I'm not really interested. Well, he got a job, moved out on his own, bought himself a big Harley, started hanging around with the biker crowds and pretty rough people. But whenever I'd come over there, David knew I didn't like cigarette smoking. So when I would come in, he would tell everybody, all right, everybody, listen up, Paul's here. You want to smoke? Step outside. Uh, you smoke in front of Paul, you're going to answer to me. Nobody smokes in front of Paul. I said, okay, David, we'll, we'll step outside. I remember one time we were in a shopping center, David and I, and it was back in the days when you could smoke. David and I were standing there uh, getting something, and this guy came up next to me. He lights up a cigarette. And I said, uh, would you mind smoking that someplace else? And the guy looks at me, and he goes, <sighs> well, he made a very serious mistake. Because <laughs> David was standing right there. And in less than half a second, David leaps in front of me, grabs the man by the chest, and lifts him straight up in the air. And David says, put the cigarette out right now, or I'm going to put you out right now. And the guy flung the cigarette away, and he goes, I'm sorry. David said, my buddy here asked you real nice. The next time somebody asks you, you better do it. And he said, I will, I will. <laughs> David put him back down on the ground. The guy slowly walks away like this. And I said, David. And he goes, what? Come on, David. And he goes, what? There's no blood. He walked away on both of his own legs. <laughs> Paul, I'm doing better. And I said, yes, David, you are doing it. He says, you're not mad at me, are you? I said, no, David, I'm not mad. He says, come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> well, a few more months go by, and his brother's going on vacation. He lives in a big mansion on the hillside. He says, Paul, would you mind watching the house while we go on vacation? I says, no, but... You know, I have a lot of people over all the time. He said, hey, place is yours. Have a good time. So the next weekend, we planned this waffle party. Now, the way a waffle party works is when you cook healthy waffles, it takes a long time, 15, 20 minutes to cook it through. So the girls, they all make the waffles ahead of time, put them in the freezer. And the night of the party, take them out of the freezer, turn on the oven, heat them right up. They're ready to go. As guys, we bring all the toppings. We bring the maple syrup, the peanut butter, the applesauce, the bananas, the pineapple, the strawberries, everything that you can put on a waffle. So I told David, I said, hey, David, next weekend, we're having a waffle party if you want to come. And he goes, woohoo, 
a waffle party. Oh, yeah, I want to go to a waffle party. I said, all right, you don't have to go. I just thought I'd invite you. And he goes, right, a waffle party. So the night of the waffle party, there's about 30 or 40 of us there, having a good time. We finished up the waffles, so we head out toward the living room to watch a crusade uh, tape. And as we head out toward the living room, David shows up with a little number he picked up on 4th Avenue, if you know what I mean. Uh, little Miss Sparkle and Shine. So uh, David smelled and he goes, wow, something smells really good. And I said, oh, it's waffles. And he goes, well, I'm hungry. And I said, well, you're a big boy. You want some waffles? Come on out to the kitchen. So the rest of them scurried out into the living room and little Miss Sparkle and, and I and David go into the kitchen. Her and I sit down and David's up at the counter and he's making himself some waffle, piling it up and he's, he's listening to what we're saying and he starts putting more stuff on his waffles and he's listening again to what we're saying and puts some more stuff, finally gets it all built up, comes over and he sits down, three of us are having a good time, we're talking, carrying on. He finishes his waffle and he goes, hey, let's go out to the living room, join the rest of them. And I said, yeah, that'll be fun. So we head out toward the living room, little Miss Sparkle is in front and David's behind me. And we pass the stairs to go to the second floor. And just as we pass the stairs, David hits me like this. And he says, you and me, upstairs, now. So he heads up the stairs and I follow behind him, goes down the hallway, I'm behind him. He slips into one of the rooms and I step inside and he's, he's kneeling down beside the bed. And I said, what's up? And he said, I don't know how to talk to the man upstairs. But I've been watching you all these months now. And I know you and him are tight. I saw how you treated that girl tonight. And if that's the kind of God you serve, that's the God I need in my life. Now, I don't know what to say, but if you'll kneel down beside me, I'll repeat whatever you say. So I knelt down beside David, and we began to pray that sinner's prayer of repentance. Dear Lord, I've done some terrible things in my life, and I need your forgiveness. I need you to come in to cleanse me, Send your Holy Spirit to make me a new man. Before we finished that prayer, David threw his arms around my neck. He began to cry like a little boy. And that night, David became a man. He became God's man in Jesus Christ.